good evening class i hope you are all able to hear me i will just check for my volume and then i shall begin uh, in earnest good evening once again everyone So today we are going to class. I hope you are all able to hear me. I will just check for my own class. I hope you are all able to hear me. Indeed, I have <coughs> now got confirmation for my voice. So on that note, I will begin straight away. So today's class is uh, I'm starting with current affairs. Back to current affairs. I had taken. a couple of sessions for october but now i'm back to november uh, current affairs so uh, this is what i'm um, planning to do so there will be total of four sessions in fact if you some of you may remember on the second of this month one such session was planned but us din nahi ho paya due to some sudden tech issues us din ka cancel karna pada tha but today i'm rescheduling there will be a total of four classes and in fact the next four days i'm going to take one class each now today tomorrow day after and on friday uh, four classes total will cover the entire month of november for you guys and i'm also going to keep looking at the chat window so that in case there are any questions which come up from your side i shall be able to uh, handle those questions immediately right let's begin um, then right so this is our uh, tagline you are probably aware sahi prep hai to life set hai this is something we've always believed in and right now we are going through certain offers as well so you can go through them right now this is a board number at the bottom 9650052904 isko use karenge to aapko flat 40 uh, you you can get a flat for 45% off there's a code you can use right now the mantra code so that will be explained to you by the counselor so just call up there and the person who will pick up this is the board number so the person will give you all the details regarding the courses you wish to join presently we are running bba and i uh, hotel management batches so you can take a look at that now i'm going to start with the current affairs today there is a certain format some of you might already be familiar because i had taken four sessions for october basically whenever there is a stand alone topic tab main headline us stand alone topic ka dunga uh, jaise the next uh, slide is a cag report to us pe main wo alag se dalunga jahan pe miscellaneous teen char topics hai ya do teen topics hai to wahan pe main november current affairs karke उसको आपको समझाऊंगा नवंबर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मंथ प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड अक्टूबर टू मार्च आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मंथ्स इन करंट अफेयर्स इन एनी कैलेंडर इन एनी एकेडमिक ईयर द फर्स्ट टॉपिक आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट दिस कंट्री न्यूजीलैंड प्लीज टर्न टू योर मैप्स एवरीवन लुक वेयर न्यूजीलैंड लाइज इट्स एट द सदर्न टिप ऑफ आवर प्लेनेट नियर ऑस्ट्रेलिया ऑफ कोर्स so new zealand had its elections recently the government of new zealand won a lot of praise during the pandemic in 2020 covid 19 the prime minister uh, war, got a lot of international applause for her excellent handling of the covid 19 situation and no wonder her party has been rewarded with yet another term the labor party won absolute majority new zealand is a country where um, coalition governments are uh, fairly common but not this time the labor party won an absolute majority uh jacinda ardern she was confirmed for the, as the pm for the second consecutive occasion now one of the important things for us is indians is that there is a person of indian origin who has made it uh, to the cabinet her name is ms priyanka radhakrishnan she has become uh, the first person ever of indian origin to become a minister of the crown now this is something interesting some of you might wonder why have i written minister of the crown so main thoda sa is pe highlight karna chahta hu मिनिस्टर ऑफ द क्राउन क्यों कहते हैं जस्ट टेक अ लुक एट दिस टर्म मिनिस्टर ऑफ द क्राउन तो मिनिस्टर ऑफ क्राउन इसलिए कहते हैं क्योंकि न्यूजीलैंड इज आई राइट दिस टर्म ऑन द चैट विंडो इट इज यूट्यूब पे लिख देता हूँ न्यूजीलैंड इज एन जेड एल इज ए कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सॉरी दो समर इट सीम्स
तो न्यूजीलैंड इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मोनार्की कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मोनार्की का मतलब है अ कंट्री विच इज अ मोनार्की इट हैज अ किंग और अ क्वीन बट इट आल्सो हैज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सो न्यूजीलैंड हेड ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट इज अ प्राइम मिनिस्टर सो देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन हेड ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एंड हेड ऑफ स्टेट द हेड ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इन इंडिया इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हेड ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इज द प्रेजिडेंट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर इन इंडिया इज द वन हु हैज द रियल पावर्स he or she is elected by the people the president is elected indirectly on paper the president is most powerful but we know that in india the prime minister has the real power similarly in united kingdom which is another constitutional monarchy also known as a democratic monarchy the prime minister has the real powers whereas the queen of england <coughs> who's officially the head she is a uh you could call it a rubber stamp uh new zealand is still uh, the the queen of uk is still the queen of new zealand new zealand australia and canada these three countries uh, the queen of england is also the queen of these three countries and all these three countries are democratic monarchies because they have a prime minister who is elected but the queen is the titular the head uh, on paper tabhi maine minister of crown likha hai kyunki because it is in the uk it's known as the minister of the crown right let's move ahead to the next point uh, there's an energy driven uh, initiative uh, in the state of kerala uh, so that's the beauty of current affairs classes the way we flip topics from one to another uh, that is what makes it rather interesting ठीक है सो देर इज दिस वेली टूरिस्ट विलेज सो मूविंग कंप्लीटली अवे फ्रॉम न्यूजीलैंड टू केरला दिस अ सोलर ड्रिवन मिनिएचर ट्रेन द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड इन इंडिया दिस वाज इनोग्यूरेटेड द वेली टूरिस्ट विलेज व्हिच इज इन द कैपिटल सिटी ऑफ केरला व्हिच इज तिरुवनंतपुरम वहां पे इनोग्यूरेट हुआ है यू कैन टेक योर टाइम एंड राइट डाउन दीज पॉइंट्स right i'll move to the next point right so i now want to talk about a report which was submitted by the cag a cag is a very important post in india uh, the cag is basically the highest auditor in the country some of you who are attending this session and i understand this is a bba class so many of you would be uh, commerce students commerce students would probably be aware that uh, the ca uh, the, the, what is audit can somebody tell me the meaning of this word i'll write down this word once again audit let's see if somebody can answer this word um for some reason i can't see my video but राइट कॉमर्स स्टूडेंट्स वुड प्रॉब्ली बी अवेयर ऑफ दिस टर्म ऑडिट ऑडिट का मतलब है एट द एंड ऑफ द फाइनेंशियल ईयर एन ऑडिटर नीड्स टू लुक इन टू द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट्स टू रियलाइज वेदर whether the uh, dealings were clean or not now i'll give you an example now if i am running a company at the at the end of the year uh, i've got aadhar card of five people or the pan card of five people or or let's say i don't have these cards and mere books mein likha hai panch logo ko salary mila hai mahine ka 1 lakh rupya but actually there is no person by that in that means there is some ghotala being done ultimately the money is coming to me similarly there could be high ended uh, valuations of very ordinary items that is again a Uh, sort of corruption so an auditor needs to check into these uh, the chief auditor in the country the highest auditor is known as the cag please note down the full form comptroller and auditor general yes i think my video has been restored very happy to see that right so cag stands for comptroller and auditor general please write this down as i said highest auditor in the country uh, there is a new person who has been appointed to this post he was appointed in 2020 itself he is you now he is a very important person his name is shri girish chandra murmu please note down his name gc murmu is not just any uh, this thing 
He was earlier the left-hand governor of Jammu and Kashmir. After the state of Jammu and Kashmir was bifurcated into JNK and Ladakh, after Article 370 was abolished and JNK was uh, then stripped of its statehood, it became a union territory. States in India have governors. Governors have limited powers, um, but union territories have left-hand governors. Left-hand governors are very powerful. So he was actually the LG of Jammu and Kashmir before this. He has now become the CAG. He has succeeded Mr. Rajiv Meharishi, who held this post since 2017. Very important these appointments are. Jahan jahan zada important hoga, main mention karunga. To please usko likh lena aap log, kyunki CAG ki important post hai. Ab ye ek report aaya hai CAG ki taraf se. Uh, the CAG says that the state of West Bengal has performed the best when it comes to utilization of state funds. So in the year 2019-20, uh, West Bengal has, I'll show you the exact data, has seen a 99.62 percent Ninety nine point six two percent fiscal reconciliation and a remarkable hundred percent receipt reconciliation. So this is remarkable. Kudos to the state government for this remarkable performance. Right, let's move ahead. I'm giving you time so that you can write this down. Of course, you can keep pausing and write it down if you're watching on record mm, but in case you're watching live then of course you do need time it's always good to prepare your own notes jo maine kaha tha pehle hi, some of you might remember maine bataya tha in one of the previous classes about how it's a very important to prepare your own notes okay now let's take a look at the nature index rankings uh, nature index rankings kya cheez hai to uh, ek um, organization hai main share karunga aapke sath kaun sa organization they come up every year with a list of cities worldwide which are designated as science cities these are cities which uh, show the best progress when it comes to a scientific understanding so it's not necessary that you have to be great in terms of execution of scientific projects that is not the point of this what this project uh, tries to show is that you need to have a thorough understanding these cities the people have um <coughs> a great insight they have a temper into science science ka knowledge ho ya wo alag baat hai but wo sochte hai scientifically ab jaise covid 19 hai covid 19 mein agar aap bahar ja rahe ho mask nahi laga rahe ho distancing nahi kar rahe ho that means even agar aapne padhai kari hai science ki to wo worth hai kyunki you know that during a pandemic you're supposed to distance yourself so that is where these uh, things were ranked and a uh, greatest encouragement to developing a scientific temper Right, uh, so we are not talking of the top level inventions in that city, but we're looking at on the ground how concerned people are towards scientific, how much they use science in their daily lives. There's a magazine very much well established worldwide called Nature, which publishes this. And you'll be happy to know all of you, proud moment for Indians. There are two Indian cities in the top 100. Bengaluru has been in uh, there or thereabouts for a while now, uh, but now we also have uh, Kolkata, which made it to the top 100 this year. Bengaluru had a slight decline from 93 to 97. Bengaluru, you would all know, is home to one of the, uh, probably the best law school in the country, also home to the Christ University, but significantly in this ranking, home to uh, the Indian Institute of Science. So that's what gives it particular high, uh, this thing, appendage here. Uh, Kolkata, very good improvement. This is remarkable. Kudos to the city from 121st to 99th. That is a tremendous improvement. Beijing, however, topped the overall rankings. Uh, in fact, the top five is made up completely by China and USA. Rank one and five are Chinese cities. Two, three and four are all from USA. So New York City, NYC stands for New York City. We've got Boston and we've got San Francisco and of course Shanghai, which complete the rest of the top five please take a look at this i'll just see in case there are any questions right guys do feel free to send me any messages you have any questions you have i will be extremely happy to answer your questions
Right, I'll move ahead then. Okay, now this is uh, basically uh, one of the offers we have at grade up right now. Uh, this was specifically around holy, but now we have a slightly different offer, so I'll talk about that in some time. Right, uh, so now I want to talk about a defense park which is set to come up. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about the history. You all know one of the tragic stories in modern India. In 2008, there was a ghastly terror attack in Mumbai. Uh, so after those terror attacks, it was decided that we need to do something really uh, drastic to improve the defense system in the country. So one of the decisions was to build a defense park. Defense park ka matlab kya hai? It is basically uh, nothing but a... Uh, are you guys aware of this term? So I'll just share with you one term on the chat window. Please tell me if you understand the meaning of this word SEZ. Can somebody explain to me the meaning of the word S-E-Z? I'll give you 30 seconds for this. Let's see if you can answer this. What is an S-E-Z? Please tell me the full form and tell me the purpose of the same. Okay, uh, so ACZ is a special economic zone. Uh, this is, that's the full form, special economic zone. This is an area which deals with a particular industry or a group of industries. Here, industries get special subsidies and there are special protections given to uh, manufacturing, especially to manufacturing, but it could also be non-manufacturing. So Defense Park is nothing but an SEZ for various defense-related industries. Now, some of you might be aware, Isko dhyan se suniye, jo mein bolne wala hu, kuch saal pehle, 2017 mein, defense was denotified from government monopoly. Before that, it was one of the few remaining items where there was a government monopoly. But after it was denotified, we only we are only left with Indian Railways, uh, where a rethink is going on. It could soon be denotified. The other is nuclear energy. They remain the only two uh, fully government monopoly uh, sectors now. Um, you know, pre liberalization, pre 1991. Uh, so, the first defense, uh, this will have a lot of industries and all of them connected with, concerned with defense production. Now, this is this has been inaugurated in Kerala. Uh, Kerala is one of the most important states for the Navy. There are, there are lots of important naval commands here. So, it's being set up in, <coughs> sorry, in Ottapalam, which is part of the Palakkad district on the, along the coastline, developed by Kinfra. Please take a look at the full form. Kinfra is, in fact, uh, you know, Kerala is one of the states which recently had its elections. So, the, uh, the ongoing government has been speaking a lot about the work that Kinfra has done because of various, uh, you know, developments. Stands for the Kerala Infrastructure Development Corporation. And it's actually part of the Make in India scheme. I'm sure you've all heard of Make in India. But many of you would not have heard of the Make in Kerala scheme. Yes, sabhi ko malum hoga. Lekin ye aap loo ke liye naya hoga. Make in Kerala. This is a scheme which is the state government. So this is a case where the national government and the state government have uh, collaborated together to uh, make this a reality. Right. Some more things. This has been approved by the DIPP, which stands for the Dep Department of Industrial Policy and Promotion. It's actually a part of the Ministry of Commerce. It's a department which works under the aegis of the Ministry of Commerce. Just checking if there are any questions uh, anywhere. Do let me know. I will be happy to answer your questions. Okay. So this park, it's uh, aimed at the MSMEs. Uh, MSME ka matlab hai, micro, small and medium enterprises. So obviously you are encouraging lots of small businesses, but at the end of the day, in order to survive, in order to be financially feasible, you do need the big ticket investments. And fortunately, you do have some big ticket investments, BEL, BML, HAL, these are part of it. BEL, I'm sure many of you have heard, Bharat Electronics Limited. 
प्लीज मेक श्योर इट्स नॉट बी एच ई एल दैट भारत हेवी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स लिमिटेड दैट्स बिट डिफरेंट दिस इज भारत इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स लिमिटेड दिस एच एल अनदर वेल नोन फॉर्म हिंदुस्तान एरोनॉटिक्स लिमिटेड दे आर वन ऑफ द की मेकर्स ऑफ ऑल इंडस्ट्रियल सॉरी मिलिट्री एस्पेशली द एयरक्राफ्ट एयरक्राफ्ट एंड हेलीकॉप्टर्स एस्पेशली तेजस विच इज क्वाइट रिनाउंड नाउ डेज and finally we have beml this is probably the least of the well known ones bharat earth movers limited as the name suggests it's a lot into construction digging uh, works a lot like jcb except that this is a psu while jcb is a private organization right let's continue ahead uh, so i now want to talk about a list called the next generation list and as i said the beauty of current affairs we started with elections in new zealand we spoke about solar energy in tamil nadu we are talking about defense park in kerala i think beech mein humne ek do aur topics baat kare the but now i'm going to talk about football the sport of football you heard me right next couple of slides in fact i'm going to talk about football uh, so all football fans please be happy over the next couple of slides i have been a big fan over several years now now there's a very important british newspaper called the guardian i am a regular reader of the same so the guardian may uh, you get regular updates uh, very good uh, newspaper for football related news um, so every year they publish several lists <coughs> at the end of every year now remember november is a month when we are heading towards the end of the year so you have these lists called the 100 best male footballers of the year 100 best female footballers of the year 60 of the best under 20 or untalented footballers who are yet to make the grade under 19 you know the guys who are still not so well known uh, and there's another list of the 20 players from each of the 20 english premier league clubs you know england's top division has 20 clubs the premier league so one promising player from each of these 20 clubs so that's what the guardian does every year this year what is remarkable is that one of those in the third list which i mentioned the 60 most talented players um, all of the world youngsters teenagers one of them mentioned this year is an indian so as i said this is a so next generation list so he is that indian please uh, many kudos to him uh, bikash yumnam the first indian footballer to make it to this list he is from manipur Uh, although he plays for the team punjab fc in the revamped i league now what is the i league i'll talk about it in some time uh, but before that punjab fc they play their matches mostly in mohali although sometimes alternatively also in phagwada which is a small industrial town near ludhiana some of you who are old time viewers of indian football might remember there was a club from punjab called jct phagwada or jct mills that was based in phagwada it was a mill team basically um, you know ludhiana is famous for textile mills cotton textile mills so in phagwada you had this thing uh, jct mills so they had a football team which was pretty good for a while uh, it's between ludhiana and jalandhar between these two cities right uh, so that's the thing now what is the i league i need to uh, explain to you guys you know that he plays for a team in the i league but what exactly is the i league Punj- punjab fc was earlier known as minerva so you have all these different names uh, which keep cropping up okay let's understand so i league kya hai uh, so if you ask uh, so people from states like bengal or kerala or goa which are the historical hot spots of football uh, they've always had great popularity for football but you've had mostly do- local leagues uh, national level leagues have been very few but the first national level league uh, came up in 1995 that was called the nfl or the national football league Uh, started in 1996 it was the first ever pan india football league before that you had the highly competitive calcutta football league you had local leagues in goa punjab hyderabad uh, in kerala but there was no nationwide league this was the first one started in 1996 in 2007 this was renamed uh, the same league the same teams but it was renamed to the i league <coughs> um, so it was the successor to the nfl everything else remains the same so the legacy of the nfl carries over to the i league just the name changes it was actually named on the model set up by japan japan started the j league korea started the k league australia a league you guessed it right so similarly india wanted the i league now a few things changed in the next couple of years so between 
between 1996 till 2013 the nfl or later the i league was the undoubted national league for football um now this was a club based league now there are two different models for football for sports club ownerships worldwide one is the european model the other is the american model so club uh, based versus franchisee based now ye kya hai thoda sa samajhte hai inka matlab kya hai club based versus franchisee based now if you look at the european football leagues like the english premier league now english premier league has clubs like manchester united liverpool arsenal it's good to keep drinking water you know i need to speak a lot in my subject now in the english premier league you have different teams as you are aware manchester united arsenal liverpool chelsea newcastle united etc now these clubs are all clubs themselves they were all founded well before a national league was founded now manchester united for example started in 1875 it was earlier known as newton heath before renaming itself as manchester united <coughs> so the club was formed first and later on all these clubs came together to form a national league if tomorrow hypothetically the national league in england stops the clubs do not stop the clubs still have their own ownership but in a franchisee based league it is the nation decides we'll have a league they build a league and each and then they open up auctions and we have city based franchisees which come up which are ultimately a part of the league now this is the american model because you're in europe the sports most of the sports originated organically later on they formed national leagues in america to some extent there was an organic growth but again because us is such a large country uh, these organic local leagues would not have been very competitive over a period of time so in the us like the major league baseball or the national football league that's a separate sport major league soccer uh, nba national hockey league all of them follow this franchisee system just to give you uh, an understanding the ipl we are to having ipl right now the indian premier league is also franchisee based league kolkata knight riders or mumbai indians do not have any ownership on paper beyond the ipl right if the ipl stops these are mere franchisees ultimately part of that league right so let's uh, take it forward to in 2014 in indian football as well something new happened there was a rival league which started called the ISL, which was a private, uh, it was not officially from the AIFF, uh, it was a new league which began. Now, ISL was franchisee based, they had rich owners like the Ambani's, uh, Saurav Ganguly, there was the Spanish football club, Atletico the Col uh, the Madrid, which invested, you had John Abraham with a team, so various, uh, Abhishek Bachchan, so a lot of these Bollywood stars and uh, tycoon, uh, film tycoons, cricketers, they invested, so there was a lot more money in the ISL at that time than there was in the I-League, so the AIFF, which is the the regulatory body for football in India, they were sort of concerned because their own league, the I-League, was sort of getting less in terms of popularity. But on the other hand, they also felt encouraged because uh, this new thing might just about be the thing that Indian football needed because Indian football obviously lagging behind other sports uh, like cricket, but this could be the spark. So there was a decision since then uh, that the I-League and the ISL should be merged. There was no point in having two different leagues because ultimately the players were getting divided. Uh, the ISL, uh, none of them were lasting long because the ISL was only a two-month league. Now that's not healthy for a national team to uh, have. You need to have a league which you have at least 20-25 matches in a season. You need enough practice. Also, foreign players would come in. Or they would be divided. Also, very, very importantly, there's an Asian Champions League. Just like in Europe, you have a UEFA Champions League. In Asia, as well you have something like this so when uh, which indian team to represent was it the i league champion was it the isl i league was officially the official uh, league but then you know the the isl had more money so there was a lot of tension between the two finally a great decision uh, took place to 2020 finally the D two leagues merged uh, because the I League had less money and the clubs did were not in a position to bargain, some of you might consider it unfair. But the I League was deemed as the second division. The ISL is now the first division. The I League is the second division. Now the best teams from I I League every year can be promoted to the ISL, while the worst from the ISL will be demoted, relegated to the second division. This is something that will keep on <coughs> keep happening now fluidly. Some of you might consider this little unfair, but 
there are uh, complications i'll talk about this so while for most of the i league clubs it wasn't possible to debate on this uh, they did not have the money and they did not have uh, the firepower to take on the isl but two of the oldest clubs in india which are part of the i league these are the two legacy clubs from kolkata they objected because they obviously could not fathom a situation where they would be in the second division for anything connected to football in india so the two legacy clubs from kolkata yes you guessed it right east bengal and mohan bagan they were allocated direct passage to the isl uh so the rest will need to win promotion to the isl in the subsequent years now the two coal clubs from kolkata now there was one more complication the isl also had one club from kolkata which is atletico di kolkata now although football is very popular in this city but to run three clubs was not going to be sustainable so it was decided to further trim it from three to two clubs so uh one of the isl clubs which is as i said atletico uh which is ultimately you know it's it's uh part owned by atletico madrid in spain a very big club in fact they are at this point that we are speaking they are top of the division in spain uh, so atletico merged with mohan bagan uh, the new entity is now called atk mohan bagan 80% of the ownership is with the old isl team and 20% with the old i league team right so it's atk mohan bagan east bengal continues as it is and the rest are the isl teams right let's continue then hero is the sponsor to this year's edition uh, because obviously this year we have a lot of uh, social distancing concerns it was decided that all the matches of the i league usually you have home and away ties in different cities that was not going to happen this year so much travel cannot be encouraged so that's why all the matches were to be held in one city which is kolkata uh, another team from mohan bagan <laughs> another team from kolkata historically the third biggest club mohammedan sporting uh, they have made it to the i league via the qualifiers and they are among the favorites for promotion to the isl <clears throat> mohan bagan uh, defending champions from 2019 20 but won't play this year due to the merger and promotion to the isl i've put it in single quotes because it's something of a promotion okay now uh, just like in cricket we have bcci which is the regulatory body for cricket in india similarly for football we have aiff which stands for all india football federation it's actually quite an old body <clears throat> as i said the regulatory body for football in india <clears throat> it's a member of both fifa as well as the afc fifa stands for it's the global regulator afc is for asia <clears throat> sorry got a slight sore throat uh 1937 uh, the afs was aiff was formed in bihar in the city of darbhanga right now the head office is in new delhi in uh, dwarka and the president is shri praful patel who is <coughs> long been associated with politics he has been a leading member of the uh, ncp the uh, party very powerful in maharashtra the nationalist congress party he has long been associated with the ncp he is the president of the aiff right uh, the delhi headquarters are in dwarka in which is in southwest delhi near gurugram let's see if there are any questions not as yet uh, i'll move on then okay so now talking about isl i'm still not done with uh, the football talk isl is indian super league franchisee based league as i said round similar to the ipl or the national hockey league started in 2014 merged with the i league in 2020 with the isl as the default top division though now this is significant until now we had a lot of confusion but none from now on the winners will represent india the afc champions league <clears throat> okay now the november current affairs uh, continuing with more miscellaneous content now there is this national park in mp it's in northern part of mp 
near the famous tourist city of Khajuraho. Uh, Khajuraho is a UNESCO World Heritage Spot and neighboring Panna is now UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. This is really truly significant. Once UNESCO gives you added protection, uh, gives you this tag, you receive added protection worldwide. You receive greater funds and of course very good for tourism because it attracts <coughs> more tourists you can uh, you can obviously claim yourself to be unesco protected site now panna is a dry deciduous forest so anybody who's visiting it's a beautiful forest will recommend all of you to go there i've been to many of the national parks in india but panna may it's a dry deciduous forest so uh, if you have an image that uh, forest should be uh, all wet and lots of tigers and stuff please don't go with that because it's naturally a bit dry it is on the northern side very similar to sariska which is in rajasthan uh, it's not very it's it's a dry it's that's the nature of the forest there are some tigers beach mein tigers extinct ho gaye the is forest se but fir ek bahut hi clever ek corridor banaya gaya tha tiger corridor and usme se tigers were relocated back to the panna tiger reserve so this will serve as a test to as a lab to test innovative approaches for eco conservation and sustainability and it's part of unesco's man and biosphere program okay the cobert tiger reserve meanwhile i'm moving from panna to cobert panna is in mp cobert is in uttarakhand this is a different topic but it's related so that's why i'm putting it together on the same slide the cobert tiger reserve will now have women nature guides for the first time in its history Okay, let's continue a bit more of the uh, miscellaneous content. So, some researchers from the IIT in Roorkee. I hope you are aware of this place. It's also in Uttarakhand, just like uh, the previous one I mentioned. They've developed the world's first specific reliable bacterial biosensor. Uh, so, it's a biosensor, bio, bio, you know, organic, but it sensors to detect the presence of environmental pollutants. So, it's really ideal for detecting viruses, bacteria, uh, etc. But especially bacteria can be detected easily. Uh, it's based on the major uh, pollutant, which is sodium uh, dodecyl sulfate, also known as sodium lauryl sulfate. It's popularly the SDS. So we are having the uh, pest cleaning thing today in our colony. So that's a bit of noise, uh, but I guess it's for a good cause. So might just disturb the video for a while, the audio. But please don't mind. It's for a good cause. Okay. So Punjab, meanwhile, becomes the first state in the country to celebrate a state-specific No Tobacco Day. That will be on 1st of November. Mm, Punjab, remember, uh, majority of people adhere to Sikhism. Uh, uh, Sikhism is the religion where tobacco is prohibited. So that is why um, this is uh, something which is not uh, completely unexpected. Punjab becomes the first state in the country to go for such a thing. Okay, moving on further, more of miscellaneous content. So, uh, now I hope you guys have heard of PETA. Have you guys heard of PETA? This is the full form. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. They basically advocate a vegan lifestyle. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this term. So, vegan is a lifestyle. Please do not confuse vegan with vegetarianism. Vegetarianism is a diet. Vegan is a lifestyle. Uh, so PETA stands for People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. Vegan includes anything which is uh, not uh, plant-based. So for example, uh, meat and eggs and fish, of course, is uh, prohibited under this lifestyle. But you also do not have, uh, shall we say, milk and dairy products. You don't have wool, silk, um, leather products and of course uh, no medicines which are tested on animals now this is something which is very difficult to actually execute uh, <coughs> i'm not sure whether vegans have all been able to do that <coughs> but generally as per the principle even that is not supposed to take place so the first caffeinated personal care brand so if any of you is a regular viewer to malls and especially to the cosmetic section this is something you would have seen there are these uh, cruelty free uh, product which has been tagged called the m caffeine 
right? It's caffeinated personal care. You know, coffee-based personal care becoming quite common in many places. Uh, this is uh, one of them. So launched on 1st of November, which is World Vegan Day. So quite an apt day. Meanwhile, moving on to the USA, you know, USA had its elections in the month of November. So Jennifer Rajkumar, she's an Indian-American lawyer. She's become the first woman from South Asia. South Asia, you know, is our region, which obviously includes India, but also our neighbors, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, and some of the island nations like Sri Lanka and Maldives. So that is the South Asia region. She has been elected to the New York State Assembly from this region. Okay, now we have the, uh, an award. I want to talk about this award called the Emmett Leahy Award. Let us understand what exactly does this award stand for. So I think thoda sa video block kar rahe, uh, is uh, statement ko. But I'm been reading out everything. So I think that way things should be fine with you guys. ओके सो एमिट ली ही अवार्ड है क्या थोड़ा सा समझते हैं ये 1967 में स्टार्ट हुआ था डिजिटल प्रेजर्वेशन की के लिए देयर इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कॉल्ड प्रेजर्विका व्हिच इज अ डिजिटल प्रेजर्वेशन कंपनी दे आर द वंस हु स्पोंसर दिस एंड इट्स नेम्ड आफ्टर एमिट ली ही हु इज एन अमेरिकन आर्काइविस्ट एंड एंटरप्रेन्योर The 2020 winner is Mr. Dinesh Katre, who is from the Center of, for Development of Advanced Computing. So, Emmett Lee, he was an American archivist. I hope you are familiar with this term, archivist. If you're not, I will tell you a little bit. Archivists are people who uh, store material, archiving. You will see it on your computer. Today's day is very easy because of digitization. But imagine back in the day, it must have been pretty tough. 1967, you had these huge floppy disks and... Uh, you know, hard disks where you had to store minute information. Uh, so yes, that is when Emmett Lee he is a pioneer. Unke naam pe awarded hai. Again, it's important this year because an Indian has won it. His name is Sri Dinesh Katre. He works in Pune for the CDAC, uh, Center for the Development of Advanced Computing. And why did he uh, win this award? What was the major thing that he developed? Let us understand. Uh, he developed uh, the digital digital laya. इसका नाम है इट इज एन ई लाइब्रेरी जो इन्होंने डेवलप किया फॉर द नेशनल कल्चरल ऑडियो विजुअल आर्काइव नेशनल कल्चरल ऑडियो विजुअल आर्काइव ठीक है इसका आप मतलब समझ ही रहे हैं एक इंडिया में भी नेशनल कल्चरल ऑडियो विजुअल आर्काइव है जो कल्चरल चीजों को स्टोर करता है बट नॉट जस्ट ऑडियो इज आल्सो विजुअल सो स्पोकन एज वेल एज व्यूइंग एंड देर इज एन ई लाइब्रेरी जो नेशनल लेवल पे मेंटेन्ड है फॉर ऑल दीज काइंड ऑफ एक्सेस एंड इट्स कॉल्ड डिजिटा लया ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू विद नवम्बर करंट अफेयर्स Again, going back to the U.S. elections, uh, the previous one I mentioned is from the Democrat Party. You know, in U.S., unlike in India, so in India we have multiple political parties. Uh, we are a multi-party system. Uh, the U.S. system is known as a bi-party system. They have only two political parties. We have the uh, Republicans and we have the Democrats. Ideologically speaking, the Republicans are considered right of center. They are more nationalistic and. Uh, uh conservative while the democrats are left of center they are the liberals and socialists uh, in comparison um, economically both are pretty much right wing but uh, in terms of cultural values uh, the uh, the republicans are more nationalistic you know donald trump was from the republicans and they are the liberals the democrats so uh, it is generally understood after a survey we don't have official figures because 
people obviously don't write it that way but uh, uh, all the surveys maximum indian americans voted for the democrats for joe biden more than 70 percent voted for joe biden about a fourth voted for uh donald trump this is much lower than last time when a significant percentage of indians voted for donald trump but there is an indian american from the republican party he has won uh, his seat there is mr neeraj antani uh, became the first indian american to make it to the senate of the state of ohio right ohio is a pretty important state it's a midwestern state uh, have you heard of the city of cleveland i'll just write down the name uh, in fact i'll write down three names cleveland uh, cincinnati and uh, columbus columbus again very famous name but uh, so these three cities they're all based in ohio Chikya. right uh, became infamous couple of years back for a shooting incident meanwhile kerala became the first state to launch royalty for paddy fields this is similar to an msp except that in this case you are getting the price for possession of the field uh, this is uh, this will help a lot in contract farming if that was to be promoted so this is for paddy fields uh, it will eventually promote paddy cultivation as well so it's uh, rated at 2000 rupee per hectare and moving further on uh, there's the shri shakti challenge award organized by my gov this is in collaboration with the UN Women. <clears throat> so UN Women is the name of one of the UN bodies, one of the UN organs and the Indian government app, which is MyGov, together the international and Indian body so the Sri Shakti Challenge Award, this is for women only, women-led startups. So six women-led, so it's not six women, it's six women-led startups. The number of women could be more because one of the startups could have two founders. Uh, so anyway, there are six overall who won this. Let us take a look at their names. So there are two categories. One is the winners, another is promising solution. Three of them were the winners and three of them were promising solutions. Uh, Let's take a look at their names along with the organization and what was the innovation that they made which created these ripples. So one of them is P. Gayatri Hela. Uh, she is um, she runs the organization Reseda Life Sciences and what did they develop? Uh, they developed uh, non-alcoholic hand sanitizers. You know, all these hand sanitizers we use, these are alcoholic in origin, but that might deter some people because some people might have false notions that this is similar to consuming alcohol or that uh, this is not going to be good enough because many people do have a false notion uh, they have a negative notion on um, alcohol a lot of other people started consuming alcohol saying that if this can be helpful if i consume i'll be even better so there were a lot of these things which took place i remember last year at this time there was a lot of misinformation on COVID. So fortunately, she has given us another option. It's a non-alcoholic hand sanitizer. There is also another uh, by a Singapore-based company that is a iodine-based hand sanitizer. So wo bhi ek baat check kar lena. it's not part of this award, but generally I'm So let's note down kar lijiye aap log. Main time deta hu aapko. I hope I'm not going too fast. Do let me know if that was to be the case right the second one is ramita ghosh she runs i heal uh, she developed a sterilizer now this is very important a sterilizer to reuse ppe kits and disposables i'm sure you guys have noticed in the last 12 months especially if anybody's done air travel um the the number of times you've had uh, the number of uh, items which are being disposed of a lot of plastic now i'm sure that is probably going to cause another pandemic in in some time in the future because see this pandemic was caused ultimately by cutting of trees I mean, you know, this uh, thing ultimately came from bats, right? Probably via the pangolin. We are not 100% sure. I mean, the WHO is not 100% sure on what was the origin. But the general understanding is that from the bat, 
via a pangolin to the human now these are wild animals they're supposed to stay in the wild if you cut trees these animals will come into your homes uh, these animals are otherwise harmless but if you do all this it will have problems so jitna hum plastic waste karenge utna zyada problem eventually hoga so fortunately she's developed this sterilizer which will help us reuse the pp kits look at the number of times pp kits are changed by doctors and medical staff and by airline staff and others as well so that can all be reused uh the third is actually a pair of two doctors dr anjana ram kumar and dr anushka ashokan they have developed than mantra as innovations which is basically an anti microbial spray that converts any cloth into a potential mask amazing i mean um we tend to buy masks specially but in this case there is already an available solution any cloth which you have at home usko aap ne direct mask mein convert kar diya that that just sounds such an amazing um, you know innovation now these are couple more uh, these are promising solutions jiska matlab hai abhi bhi they are not yet there but in the near future they should be so let's see who are the winners uh, one of them is uh, vasanti palanivel she runs serajan biotherapeutics they have developed a plasma solution to treat respiratory diseases you know there are lots of respiratory disease covid 19 is in fact one way of looking at it it's a, it's a respiratory disease so uh, plasma solutions did become very uh, popular initially in delhi i remember a lot of the patients who recovered unka plasma liya jata tha over a period of time this has been proven to be partially successful but it's not a 100% solution uh, so that's why it's been put in as a promising solution but uh, maybe not 100% the next one is shivi kapil from the empathy design labs if i'm going too fast do let me know she's developed kriya which is a wearable device for regular monitoring of pregnancy you know pregnancy is of course there are lots of unplanned pregnancies women often uh, struggle because of these things which came up suddenly so uske liye uh, this can be a great solution and finally this is directly related to covid 19 it's a, a family uh, of two jaya parashar and ankita parashar i think they are mother and daughter i'm not 100% sure or maybe they are two sisters they have uh, started stream minds and they have developed a dobo which is you know it's a play on the word robo so it's a fully automated robo which acts as in house delivery assistant to make hospitals and healthcare clinics safe from covid 19 risks amazing so if i am a doctor and there is a patient i do not need to touch that person i do not need to go too uh, close to that person because i've got my dobo which does a lot of the ferrying uh, carrying and bringing back so that's something truly uh, significant so i hope you guys felt uh, motivated by all these new developments which are uh, you know doing so well right now right let's move ahead further uh, to november current affairs now he is the chief of the indian army his name is manoj mukund narawane he was recently conferred the honorary rank of general of the nepal army so india nepal have long shared very close ties uh, unfortunately last year these ties did sour for a while when there was this uh, controversy regarding the lipulek pass there was some tension between the two countries but fortunately now most of the problems have been buried uh so general uh, manoj mukund narawane in fact in one of my previous classes october current affairs i did explain to you the entire scenario why was there this confusion and what can now be done to solve that uh so mr narawane he has been conferred this rank now this is an old tradition uh just to show the great relations between india and nepal i don't know if you guys are aware uh citizens of nepal they can apply to any of the indian uh military positions without any uh, restrictions there is also a nepalese regiment in the united kingdom the gorkha regiment originally from nepal decade old tradition as i said it reflects a strong uh, strong ties between the two militaries so one of the purposes of his travel was to reiterate that we still retain a close tie between the two countries Okay so Miss Vidya Devi Bhandari she is the president of Nepal 
बट फाइनली अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अपॉइंटमेंट आई वॉन्ट यू गैस टू मार्क अ स्टार दिस इज जब भी ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट होगा मैं आपको स्पेशली मैंशन कर दूंगा तो दिस इज वन ऑफ दो सिचुएशन श्री यशवर्धन कुमार सिन्हा दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट अपॉइंटमेंट जस्ट एज आई हैड टोल्ड यू अर्लियर टूडे रिगार्डिंग द सी ए जी और कॉम्प्टोल एंड ऑडिटर जनरल सिमिलरली आई विल टॉक अबाउट द सी आई सी बिकॉज टूडे सो सी आई सी इज बेसिकली द ऑफिस फ्रॉम वेयर ऑल काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन द ऑफिशियल गवर्नमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन इज ब्रॉडकास्ट सो एनी इंफॉर्मेशन विच इज बीन ब्रॉट आउट ऑफिशियली फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट इफ इट इफ इट इज क्रेडिबल देन द सी आई सी इट हैज टू गो थ्रू द सी आई सी so this person has now been appointed shri yashwardhan kumar then her different heads of the government they meet together the, they meet with the on parliament as well to discuss the uh, basically uh, these panels and committees are created within the parliament to create uh, these final selections right some more of the miscellaneous content uh, so there is this indian film uh, which actually was which uh, won a lot of awards last year i remember uh, gully boy this back the best original music award uh, so it won a lot of indian awards but now it has also won a truly significant international award uh, it's the musician the chief musician music director mr karsh kale who won this award along with his studio which is the salvage audio collective there was recently this award ceremony it was digital this year so you guys don't need to remember the venue that's one thing you guys are safe from uh, it's the annual asian film awards right so every year we have this award which as the name suggests celebrates the best films produced in asia and so this film won the uh, so only one indian film got any award this was the only one the overall best picture there are no points for guessing it is obviously parasite which is a south korean film and the reason i said no points for guessing is i think is obvious parasite won the oscar for best film in the whole i mean oscars if you can win oscar being a korean film then definitely a korean film i mean it's unlikely a korean film wins an oscar so uh, it's it's pretty obvious that korea this best film should win the asian award at least i think there's a japanese film which has been uh, minaki or something which has been nominated this year as well i'm forgetting the name minari i think that's the name so there is an east asian um, identity which is truly developing in the oscars that's encouraging because a lot of indians also enjoy these korean films and korean web series uh, they somehow tend to connect very well with indians a lot of cultural values tend to be similar you know for example koreans and chinese japanese just like we indians or even turkish films for that matter wo bahar juta khol ke aate that that's a very indian very asian thing you'll not find westerners or europeans doing that having separate clothes for outside and home we've always been following this uh, the west has now been following after the pandemic but we always had these uh, conventions right uh, mr meanwhile the prime minister of india shri narendra modi uh, that this is very important i'll talk in detail about the sco some other day uh, i believe in one of my previous slides i have already discussed so the prime minister of india he led the indian delegation to the 20th summit of the sco council of heads of state this was held virtually on the 10th of november 2020 uh, later on another uh, was conducted on 30th november that was headed by the vice president shri venkaiah naidu okay so now this is a very important topic nowadays you know especially for a lot of hotel management students uh, climate change and environment have become very important topics in a lot of these entrance examinations or further when you have group discussions interviews essay writing there are a lot of these questions which are asked on the uh, environment and climate change front so one of those things uh, important developments which has taken place recently is uh, the palau pledge to so, palau pledge kya hai thoda samajhte hain palau is a very small country you could say they are punching above their weight when it comes to global matters why are they doing that it's because they have become one among the innovators when it comes to the environment couple of years back now before we move ahead i want everybody i'm giving you 30 seconds or maybe a minute please take a look uh, at the location of palau where is this country located in because if you don't uh, tell me that it will not be worthwhile
Right. I hope you guys have been able to look up where is Palau. It is an island nation. It's an archipelago. Archipelago ka matlab hai, group of islands. Uh, so it's a group of islands near the country of Philippines. I'm sure you've all heard of Philippines. Philippines is in Southeast Asia. Uh, so Palau isn't that close, but yeah, by nautical standards, it's relatively close. Uh, it's on the Pacific Ocean, the Central Pacific Ocean. Now, the South Pacific Ocean is known as the Ring of Fire. There are lots of volcanoes. Central does have a few volcanic islands. So uh, this area does have a few, but it's also a lot of coral islands. You know, coral reefs, they settle in over millions of years and then they are so strong, they form an entire island. So Palau is one such example. Now, a couple of years back in 2018, Palau did something interesting. They banned all reef toxic chemicals on the island. And that includes even uh, sunscreen lotions. Now, sunscreen lotion ka kya relation hai, aapko samjhata hu. Especially in these beaches, on these beaches and these warm countries where you get a lot of sunshine. People, the tourists, they often use these sunscreen lotions. But uh, ultimately, these lotions are chemicals. Now, you have used to kar liya, bach ka so called from the, this thing. But if you don't go, when you don't go, the water will actually, I mean, these chemicals, they, they cannot be destroyed, right? Matter can't be destroyed. So these chemicals then wash off onto the drain and drains ultimately to the ocean. That's very harmful now. Thoda bhot idhar udhar doesn't matter. But in an environment which is so fragile, over a period of time and with so many visitors coming in, lots of tourists, it was having serious effects on the fishing. Palau famous for two things. One is fishing, the other is tourism. Both these sectors depend on a healthy ocean. So that's why they banned it. And now they've gone another step. They want to become the first country in the world to be carbon neutral. So which means that the amount of carbon dioxide generated from this country will be offset by the uh, carbon which is absorbed through various planting uh, plantation measures which will come up. From now on, anybody who visits this country, Palau, has to go with a Palau pledge. You know, pledge hum sab ne school mein liya hai. So something very similar. Uh, you know, many countries have different norms for visitors. Like in Kenya, you have a yellow fever vaccine, jo bahut zaruri hai. Aur kuch aap kare na kare, yellow fever vaccine zaruri hai. Similarly in Palau, uh, ye cheez zaruri hai. Visa bagera to ho jayega, but ye sab se zada zaruri It's called a Palau pledge. Now, Palau supports these two organizations uh, the icdf and the cofe these two international um, you know bodies icdf stands for international cooperation and development fund while the cofe stands for the coalition of fragile ecosystems international cooperation and development fund and cofe stands for coalition of fragile ecosystems Right, let's continue further with November current affairs. Ye mein thoda sa ek dikha deta ho. Aap log please isko copy kar lijiye. Let me see if there are any more questions. Guys, do join our Telegram channels like I have mentioned here. But tab tak aap in dono cheezo ko copy kar lijiye. Right, I hope I give you enough time to copy this. I'll now move forward to the next uh, slide. Okay, continuing with some more of the miscellaneous content. Do keep your questions coming in. Now, this is fairly important. Uh, the NCLT stands for the National Company Law Tribunal, uh, which is basically the uh, 
the apex court for all corporate related cases you know just like we have the national green tribunal there's a national water tribunal this is for all company law related cases the top court based in new delhi so uh, the first ever state based company which has been dissolved uh, as per the nclt has happened now that is the upsmdc the uttar pradesh state mineral development corporation the first state public sector uh, company to be dissolved so uh, this is truly significant it's a new move uh, because of um, uh, several problems the organization was running through there is another body called nclat which is national company law appellate tribunal there's a slight difference between the two uh, but this is enough for you right now meanwhile uh, moving on from uttar pradesh to uk uh, not uttarakhand but uh, united kingdom so scotland has become the first state you know uk has four states england scotland wales and northern ireland uh, so scotland among them has become the first to impose a ban on smacking children basically you cannot hit children now this can be a matter of great debate uh, you know angrezon ne hi hame sikhaya tha ye kahawat you know spoil, spare the rod spoil the child ki bachcha bigad jata usko na peeto to but now the british have gone back they are saying that we shouldn't so anyway i think it's a good thing not to have um, capital punishment but then can parents also not do this that is a debatable matter so you guys can discuss this we can have a group discussion on this some other day okay so now i want to talk about this bridge called the dobra chanti bridge ye kya cheez hai this is uh, this is an important question isko thoda sa uh, dhyan se dekhiye so what is the dobra chanti bridge thoda sa samajh lete hai uh, it's india's longest uh single lane motorable suspension bridge now let's understand what is a suspension bridge now i'm sure you've all seen uh flyovers and bridges in whichever city you're located in there's the iconic howrah bridge for example in kolkata delhi has so many flyovers uh, mumbai has that very important sea link uh, worldly sea link so ye kya hai these are called cantilever bridges because they run solid on some metal uh, and concrete structures so they remain solid uske upar gaadiya trucks kuch bhi move kar sakte no problem but you have another kind of structure Uh, in remote areas jahan pe you cannot have such deep construction so wahan pe we have suspension bridges now what are suspension bridges so you have one side of the mountain and another side of the mountain yahan pe aapne ek thoda sa kuch uh, you know bana liya and then you beam this you literally beam this to the other side here you have another similar structure and the two of them join using magnetic levitation uh, so that's how they connect and on this bridge you cannot have very heavy traffic in fact mostly it is only walking you can't have uh, trucks or cars or anything but some of them the most advanced ones they do allow something now this single lane for example so only one side you can have traffic uh, kudos to this engineering marvel done in uttarakhand the dobra chanti bridge uh, inaugurated in uh, the tehri garhwal district of uttarakhand and it is 725 meters long aapko length थोड़ा याद करना होगा क्योंकि क्या पता एग्जाम में लेंथ का क्वेश्चन दे दे सो so, प्लीज इसको ध्यान रखिए इसका 725 मीटर लॉन्ग दैट इज द लेंथ एंड इट कनेक्ट्स तेहरी गढ़वाल टू प्रताप नगर also this was inaugurated by the uttarakhand chief minister shri trivendra singh rawat he is no longer the chief minister so he is the ex uttarakhand then he was the chief minister he has now been replaced uh, by mr tirath singh rawat so that's uh, but yeah back then he was the chief minister uh, uttarakhand uh, has uh, is a state where the political power keeps changing generally so last time the bjp came to power in 2000 16 2020 uh, 17 sorry 2022 will see the next elections uh, in simultaneously with uttar pradesh punjab uh, goa and manipur okay now let's talk about this thing called imvwsp what does this stand for let's understand iska full form dekh lijiye integrated multi village supply project water supply project आप लोग लिख सकते हैं ये फुल फॉर्म आई गिव यू टाइम टू राइट दिस डाउन इंटीग्रेटेड मल्टी विलेज वाटर सप्लाई प्रोजेक्ट
ठीक है आई होप यू कॉपीड दिस डाउन आई एम बींग फेयर गिविंग यू एम्पल टाइम टू राइट थिंग्स डाउन ओके सो इंडिया फर्स्ट सोलर बेस्ड आई एम वी डब्ल्यू एस पी प्रोजेक्ट हैज बीन इनोग्यूरेटेड दिस इज इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश इन द पर्टिकुलर डिस्ट्रिक्ट कॉल लोअर दिबांग एंड इट वॉज इनोग्यूरेटेड बाई द जल शक्ति मिनिस्टर यूनियन जल शक्ति मिनिस्टर ही श्री गजेंद्र सिंह शेखावत so there were earlier several ministries they were all merged into the jal shakti minister that ministry that makes it much leaner he is a bjp mp in the lok sabha from rajasthan shri gajendra singh shekhawat right let's continue further uh, this is the democrat candidate i have already told you about this joe biden he defeated the republican donald trump becoming the 46th president of the usa he was 77 years old at the time he took oath which makes him the oldest donald trump until now was the oldest ever uh, so joe biden now becomes the oldest lots of records donald trump has broken he has also become uh, the, the first ever us president to be impeached twice uh, fortunately for him the senate saved him both the times but the house of representatives where the members are voted for they impeached him on two occasions and also uh, donald trump became only the third us president since the second world war to lose after a single term the other two being uh, jimmy carter from the democrats and uh, george w bush george senior george bush who had just one term although george bush's son did become the president two times later on meanwhile there was an exercise which was run by the indian armed forces it's a it's for the indian armed forces alone so we often have a lot of bilateral or multilateral military exercises this is not one of them uh, so the armed forces conducted a joint tri service exercise called bull strike which was at the teresa island uh, teresa island is uh, it's on the nicobar group of islands you know andaman and nicobar and it's actually the deep south of india and it's uh, near the strait of malacca which is in southeast asia strait of malacca strait what is the strait first of all the strait is a narrow strip of land uh, between which separates two major land masses <coughs> and connects two major water bodies that's what a strait is so Mm, that is exactly what uh, the strait of malacca uh, is now strait of malacca kahan pe it is between the asian mainland in malaysia and the indonesian island of sumatra and in fact the country of singapore is also located here main ek baar likh ke deta hu aap logo ko kahan exactly hai malacca strait malacca strait uh, between uh, asian mainland at malaysia and the Indonesian island of Sumatra theek hai and Singapore is also present here in fact it is uh, often considered the strength you know Singapore's great strength is the fact that uh, you know Singapore is present here such a geo strategic location that uh, and it's it's a very important shipping hub before singapore became this modern metropolis it started its economic success thanks to its location um, in one of the busiest shipping hubs it became a free trade center basically right so i'm more or less done with today's class i'll continue with the november current affairs but just to remind you we have a batch which is ongoing uh these are some of the trainers there we understand that yes you guys are comfortable calling but you might want to uh send us uh, a whatsapp message as well so this is the thing 93544 please feel free to whatsapp us this niche ka jo slide hai basically uh, this was holy special uh, we now have a different code i'll share that with you in tomorrow's class tomorrow i'm taking a class 11 o'clock in the morning so be present with me मेहनत सो सो वो एक अलग कोड है ये एक्चुअली मैंने बताया था ना पहले पीपीटी बना था सेकेंड नवंबर को होने वाला था नहीं हो पाया दैट इज वाई दिस इज देयर बट दैट इज नॉट बी टू बोरो आई शेयर विथ यू द लेटेस्ट कोड सो दिस द व्हाट्सएप नंबर यू कैन व्हाट्सएप अस हियर टू गेट मोर डिटेल्स दीज आर आर ट्रेनर्स एज यू कैन सी आशुतोष 
He's a top quants and reasoning uh, trainer. Then we have Sanujam, who has a lot of experience of almost two decades. Uh, he's an English expert. And we have Rabia, who is a fellow GK trainer like myself. So you'll be, I'm sure you will enjoy a lot the classes of these three trainers. And for any queries, I've shared with you the board number 965005290. You can also feel free to contact at the other number 9319599244. So we give you uh, for all these courses like DOJAT, IPMAT, SET, NCHNJE, MASCOM, Sare courses ke liye humare paas options hai. Right. Uh, so this is our slogan as you are all aware by now. Sahi prep hai to live set hai. Uh, do subscribe on our YouTube channel. I think many of you watched my session on YouTube as well. But do press the bell icon so that you can keep receiving uh, updates for the same, the notifications before the classes. We are also present on Telegram. Uh, so this is the name of the channel. It's called Copy Karke Search Kijiye. You will find uh, us there. Telegram, of course, very popular app nowadays. You know, so many people got scared of WhatsApp uh, and perhaps rightly so. We'll have a discussion on that some other day. But yes, many people moved on to Telegram and Signal. So Telegram, very popular. I hope everybody has an account here. A lot of academic institutions are making use of it due to uh, the supposed better privacy norms. Right. Uh, we are also there as an app. We have a great app. app. So, you can Google Play Store. Mein mil you can see good number of stars we've received for that. There are lots of practice-wise quizzes and you can keep attending the live classes which are available. Right. So, see you all tomorrow for the classes. I'll just keep it open for a couple of minutes in case you guys have any questions. So just keep an eye out in case there are questions for a moment or so. Fair enough. I think I, uh, we can wrap up the session now. So wonderful interacting with all of you. Uh, tomorrow is Baisakhi. Uh, tomorrow is also uh, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar's uh, B.R. Ambedkar Jayanti. So I hope you are celebrating Baisakhi. Of course, very important festival in the north. Today is Ugadi and Gudi Parva. So my uh, hearty wish wishes to all of you. But please stay home, stay safe. That is the best way. And I know education might be suffering for many of you, but then you have grade up. You have our online solution. So do keep uh, attuned to what is happening in the world through our classes. So wish you once again the very best for these uh, festivals. Fair enough, I think that we can.